Get ready guys, we're gonna learn some really good words that are needed for not only improving your English level, but whenever you write and speak. There are things that everybody says, okay? Some very common words and phrases that everybody's gonna use. If you use them in daily life, maybe it's okay. It's, I think, better to have a variety, but especially if you're doing your CELPIP and IELTS exams, you need to be unique. You need to have a variety of words and you need to know where to insert them. Okay, so today I've made a list of some really common words that I keep seeing every time from students and how to replace them. What are the best replacements for those words and where to put them? You know, I want to make it practical. I want to make sure that when you actually speak and write, you come across these situations and are able to put in these words beautifully. So let's get started. The first word that you will always hear and you will always repeat is the word important. So if you're writing your essays, you're going to say something is so important or past events, you're speaking about it in CELPIP maybe, or even in IELTS, you're going to talk about how important this thing was in my past life, whatever. Now, you want to replace this word with something else, because if I've seen this with my 10 years plus of experience in teaching, if I've seen this thousands of times, examiners probably have seen it millions of times, it's so repeated. Don't say important, what you can say as a replacement are three things, critical, so something is critical, or meaningful, if it's really important, it, if it had a good meaning, like that's the thing you want to put in your sentence, you say meaningful. And off substance, okay, this is unique. This is really my favorite one among all of them because very few people will actually use it. So uh, you want to say that uh, this career was really meaningful, you know, it was really important to you. You can say among all the things I did, teaching was something that was off substance. It's so fancy, it's so unique, it will be something that the examiner is not expecting. And that's exactly what you want to show, something unexpected and unique. Let's go to our next word. This word is the criminal of English. You know, if someone was to be put in jail, it would be this word because it's so often repeated. It's like the most repeated offense in English. And that's the most common word, and, A-N-D. It's simple, you know, everybody says that. And you cannot avoid it, like don't try to avoid it uh, because sometimes you do have to say it. But when you get a chance to replace it with something better, I'll tell you where you can, what you can put instead of and. So moreover, this is a direct replacement of and. So whenever you wanna say and, just say moreover, except when you're making lists, you know, if you're saying uh, cheese and pie and whatever, you cannot say cheese, moreover, pie, of course, I think you would understand that. But when you're saying a new point or an additional idea, say moreover instead of and. Okay, you can also say what's more. Now, this is different from what I've taught before. I have said some very, again, not common. It's more than common. It's a little complex, like moreover, furthermore, and similarly. But I'm changing that list today. I want to keep moreover. It's still very useful, but I want to make it more fancy. So let's say what's more. That's the next connector you can use two words. What's more. And another one, this, this is three words, needless, needless is one word, needless to say. Okay, so again, you can just add multiple points using these conjunctions. For example, you know, you want to say, um, I wanted to do a degree in my, uh, in, during my study days, and I wanted to become a doctor. You can say, I wanted to do a degree in my, during my educational phase, needless to say, it was to become a doctor. Much more fancy, right? It's so unique, so different. And it's, it's very, it's much better than just saying and, obviously. Okay, however, you'll come across this a lot. So IELTS and CELPIP present you with situations where you have to contradict, you have to present the other side of the story. So the, the advanced way to say but is however, but now however, everybody knows it, so it's becoming really common. What I've taught on this channel before, I'm gonna stick by it, is use the words nonetheless or nevertheless. These both words are interchangeable with however, and they're again formal words, they can easily be used in essays or speaking on formal topics. Very good words to use instead of however. Let's get rid of however too, it's becoming too common. Okay. Adverbs. I have emphasized this a lot that when we talk about a range of vocabulary, we don't talk about adjectives and nouns. And yes, you can go in a thesaurus and you can find multiple words, but we're also talking about adverbs. People don't usually say adverbs. And adverbs are things with ly. So 
significantly, greatly, positively. Anything with li is an adverb. And when you place this with adjectives, nouns, and others, you are now giving the examiner a range of vocab, multiple parts of speech. And this is what increases your marks with IELTS and CELPIT. So let's learn some uh, adverbs that you can actually use in multiple cases. Very, very simple ones. These are simple. They're not complex vocab, but there's things you can actually place in your essays and your speaking. First one is significantly. Then you have greatly. Drastically, if something is you know, really uh, drastically improving, uh, degenerating, or something is changing, it's, it's, it's a big event, you can say drastically. Amazingly, and this is usually uh, interchangeable with surprisingly, like something is shocking, so you want to say amazingly. Ridiculously, okay, so this is again to emphasize something, the prices are ridiculously low, or you look ridiculously... Um, stupid in that dress, you know, you can you can actually make it negative, you can also make it positive. Uh, it is a ridiculously pleasant weather. I mentioned this last time with the word awfully, which can also be turned into a positive thing. He is uh, awfully genius when it comes to whatever. Okay, Th these are smart combinations, examiners don't expect them. And if you use them, pl and, and the thing is, you can actually use them in so many places, then you get a good mark. Okay, advantages, disadvantages, this is a simple one, but people don't use it. So I have to emphasize, when you want to say advantages and disadvantages, just say pros and cons, much more fancy. Okay, pros and cons instead of advantages and disadvantages. Let's talk about good and bad. You know, very commonly you would use good and bad. Instead of good, replace that with spectacular. Spectacular is the same thing like excellent, it's synonymous. But guess what? Excellent is being used by everybody and good is being used by a lot more people, as you can imagine. So just go with spectacular. When you want to say bad, instead of bad, go with detrimental. Detrimental is harmful. So you can go with detrimental. You can place it in a lot of places where it's really bad. Uh, but if, if it's slightly, you know, it's not that damaging. Uh, it's just, for example, you know, the environment, environment is going to be ruined. So you can say it's going to be detrimental for the environment. But if you you, you got, a, you know, an 88% instead of uh, 90, 88 is not bad, right? But if you are one of those people, so you would say that this is a critical situation. So in, I'm, tr I'm trying not to say the word negative, you know, bad and negative are common words. I want to replace it with critical. And if it's really bad, it's detrimental. Okay. Obviously, uh, we use that a lot. And if it's in an informal conversation, keep obviously. That is informal. If it is formal, though, you can say apparently. But even that is becoming more common. So you can also say conspicuously. Conspicuously is much better. It's the same thing like apparently or obviously, but it's more fancy, as you can imagine. If you don't know this word, it means it's fancy vocab. And if you know it, you're a genius. But trust me, examiners don't see this. So use it conspicuously. All right. Now, let's talk about CELPIP, uh, CELPIP speaking only in this part. Uh, when we're doing CELPA speaking, we're talking to people and we're talking to a friend or family or whatever. There are places where you just have to use some fillers like and or um or so. You cannot avoid them. And I'm not going to re recommend you using like moreover or also in some places because you want to be natural too. But there are better ways to be natural. So one thing we see is, okay, so and so. Right, uh, we see that a lot. We also see the word "see" itself. Okay, so people say, uh, "See, I want to tell you something." See, there's some problem. That's wrong, guys. Don't say that because it doesn't make any grammar sense. This filler, I don't know where it was invented or how, but it's incorrect. Don't say "see" as a filler. If you want to use fillers with people, the two I would recommend that actually work with grammar are "now" and "listen." Listen is very commonly used in Australia, actually. Uh, my Australian partners always say, listen, I, I hear that a lot. Uh, now is a little uncommon, but still it's correct. So how do you use that is, for example, you're talking to someone in CELPIP and it's about it's time to say goodbye. So you can say, now, I know I've given you a lot of suggestions. Time to say goodbye. Maybe I'll talk to you next week. Or you can say, listen, I hope you understand everything I've said. I hope you don't mind the suggestions. Let me give you a call back next week to follow up.
So it's just like that ending part where you say, okay, so take care, goodbye, right? So I'm trying to avoid saying, okay, so. I'm trying to avoid that in any place I can, and I will replace them with now and listen. Okay. The next is last but not the least. Again, this is also one of those connectors we use at the end. Instead of this, you know, I've recommended a few things in the past. I've said you can use finally. Uh, there's some good combinations I've recommended. Con uh, conclusively, or you can say to conclude, or overall, all that fancy stuff. That's still better than saying uh, at the end, or something simple like last but not the least. But today I want to teach you guys the word certainly. Certainly is not a conjunct. It's not a conjunction to be used at the conclusion. You know, it's not like to conclude. But that's the whole reason we're going to use it. It is something that can be summed up, uh, that can be used to sum up everything. Like it can be replaced with overall. But it's also a conjunction. It, it's something different. It's something unique that you can place at the end. So, for example, uh, you're making an essay. You're giving your three points. You know, I support this and um, I support media because they're great. They give jobs and they give us news. And at the end, you would say to conclude, media is awesome. Now just say certainly with all these abilities that media is able to have and offer to the world, they are a great product. It's the same idea, it's the same meaning, the same essence, but it's a different word. Certainly it has a Lee in it, which is what I like, and it's unique. So it's an awesome word to use. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the informal situations, because you guys might be thinking, what if we're doing the IELTS scenario or the self up questions where we're talking about informal topics? So there are some good words to remember there. Awesome and bummer. Awesome is to be used in all the good situations. You know, this thing, you don't want to say this thing is a spectacular. It sounds too formal. You can say this thing is awesome. And this thing was a bummer if it's something really negative. Okay, they're informal words. Connectors, the two connectors I like informally are also and plus. Okay, instead of furthermore, moreover, also and plus, they are more informal. Um, sometimes we want to say the word crap, right? But we cannot, it's too informal. It's kind of like slang. So if you're being mad at something, you want to say it's uh, it's a bunch of crap. Use junk or a garbage instead of, instead of the word crap. So if you're saying, you know, it's a bunch of crap, you can say it's a bunch of, not a bunch of junk. In, in that scenario, I would say it's all garbage. Okay, not a bunch of garbage. It's all garbage. You would have to replace it. It's all garbage or... Uh, if I see a product and it looks like crap, I'm going to say it looks like junk. All right. So that's a good way to vent out your frustration. And the concluding word, you can again say certainly. Certainly is not bad. You, again, there are others like overall and finally. But in the informal speaking or writing, you want to say after all. Okay, so when everything is done, after all could be used at the end. So again, with the media topic, you know, I support media because of one, two, three. After all, they provide us all these resources, which is why media is something that should be respected. Again, it's a good conclusion. So guys, these words and these kind of phrases, you will be able to use in so many situations because you come across connectors, obviously conclusions, the ands, the fillers. So I've tried to find a way to give you everything that you can place in all these places. Now, all you got to do is start implementing them. You want to find ways when you're practicing at home with your speaking and writing, try to place these words in, in all those places, and you will notice that they sound amazing. And that's it, guys. I hope this helps out. Please subscribe if you like my content and like and share just like usual. Thank you very much for your continued support and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.